Hi guys and welcome back to my Evilness Podcast. Today we will be talking about the true crime case of Timothy Pitson. Timothy was described as outgoing, friendly and cheerful six-year-old. He was last seen leaving a Winston water park with his mother, Amy Pitson. Amy suffered from severe depression most of her life, which only worsened as her divorce rate rose. Amy had had three divorces. Once earlier in her life, Amy had tried to commit suicide, obviously with this attempt being unsuccessful. But life had not been easy for Amy up until the early 2000s when things were starting to look up. Amy met Jim Pitson, and as you can guess by the name, the couple went on to marry and have a son, Timothy, a son who immediately became the light of Amy's life. She even added an extra M to his name to, quote, make it more special. The bond shared between mother and son seemed very strong. The same could not be said about her marriage to Jim. The pair were always fighting. The fighting got to the point where Amy was sure her next divorce was near. Given Amy's track record with relationships, coupled with a history of mental illness, you don't need to be a genius to figure out that most judges would not grant Amy custody of Timothy. To Amy, this might have seemed as if the only one good thing in her life, this child who she loved so much, would be taken from her. On the 11th of May 2011, a little before 8am that morning, Jim dropped Timothy off at school and watched as he ran towards his kindergarten teacher, his Spider-Man backpack swinging from side to side as he ran. Jim had no idea as he drove away that this would be the last time that he would ever see Timothy. When Jim arrived to pick Timothy up after school, he was informed Timothy had already been picked up by his mother just 30 minutes after arriving at school that morning. Amy had told the school that there was a family emergency and that Timmy had to leave quickly. Of course, Jim knew nothing of this family emergency because there wasn't one. Jim tried to call Amy, but her phone went straight to voicemail. Jim was both confused and worried, but he did trust that Amy would not hurt Timothy. Amy had driven with Timothy to Illinois, and it seemed perhaps this was just a spur-of-the-moment road trip. Over the next few days, Amy took Timothy to a resort, a zoo, and a water park. The pair were seen on CCTV footage at these locations, showing Timothy with lollies, candy, and toys. Every child's dream, right, to skip school, get lollies, toys, and visit these really fun places. But was there something more sinister going through Amy's mind? At one point, the pair travelled to Wisconsin, where Amy actually got in touch by a phone call with family. But it wasn't Jim who she got in touch with. It was his brother. She told him that Timothy was safe, but she added that Timothy was hers and only hers. She also contacted her mother and also told her that Timothy was safe. During this call, Timothy was heard in the background multiple times. One of these times, he was complaining about being hungry. On the 13th of May 2011, at around 10am, Amy checked her and Timothy out of the hotel where they had been staying in Wisconsin. CCTV images show the pair at the front desk. That night, Amy was seen on CCTV footage entering a family dollar store in Winnebago. Here, she bought paper pens and envelopes. However, Timothy was not with Amy. This was the first time since the 11th of May, the day that she took Timothy from school, that Amy was seen on any CCTV cameras without Timothy. But it would not be the last. Amy then went and purchased food from another store. Again, she was alone. It wasn't for another few hours when Amy would next be seen on CCTV, when she checked into a hotel in Rockford, where she booked a room for one. It was alone in this hotel room where Amy Pitson would take her own life.
On the 14th of May 2011, Amy's body was discovered in the hotel room. She had deep gashes along both of her wrists and her neck. Her blood revealed that she had consumed a potentially lethal amount of antihistamines. Amy left a note in which she apologises to her loved ones for causing this mess. She also said that Timothy was safe, but she added the disturbing statement that he would never be found. Another note was sent to Amy's mother, which reiterated her statement that Timothy had been taken somewhere safe and that he would be cared for for years and years. She added that Timothy says he loves you. The case quickly gained national attention due to its shocking and disturbing nature. The search went from days that turned into weeks which turned into months and then years. Now and then there were claims that someone saw Timothy in a park or restaurant, but none of these claims were substantial. In April of 2019, a boy at a Cincinnati hospital tells authorities that he is Timothy Pitson. Jim got a call telling him about this. The boy said that he had escaped from two kidnappers who held him hostage for over seven years. Once escaping, the boy said that he ran and kept running until he was eventually found. Jim was ecstatic. His relentless searching and never giving up hope had finally paid off and the case was solved. DNA tests were administered to the scared boy as a precautionary measure to prove that this was Timothy. The test results quickly came back and they had shocking results. This 14-year-old boy was not Timothy Pitson. In fact, his name was Brian Rinney and he was not a 14-year-old boy at all, but a 23-year-old man who was a convicted felon who had forged his identity in the past. In this case, he had watched a television special on Timothy Pitson and decided to impersonate him. His motive for doing this isn't really known, but for Jim, the impact must have been devastating. He basically had to face losing Timothy all over again. This was the last major news in this case, and to this day, Timothy remains missing and the case remains open. He would have turned 16 in 2021. So I will tell you guys a couple of theories because, of course, there are theories. One of the most credible theories is that Timothy was murdered. Police examination of Amy's vehicle revealed a substantial amount of blood throughout the car, blood that was revealed as belonging to Timothy. This, along with the irregular actions and unfit mental state of Amy, had led many to speculate that Amy had actually murdered Timothy. In her suicide note, when she mentions that Timothy was safe with people he loved and would never be found, people took this to mean that Timothy was now in heaven with other loved ones. Upon further examination of her vehicle, it was determined that the car had been parked in a grassy area, possibly near a stream. This led to speculation that Amy could have killed Timothy and dumped his body in the woods in a spot she was sure would never be checked. This could also explain where Timothy was when Amy was seen in the CCTV footage without him. It would also explain why Amy took Timothy to all those nice places. Maybe this was a way, her way of trying to make his final hours the best he has ever had. But if you continue to dig, there is a lot of evidence to cast doubt onto that theory. <laughs> For example, Timothy was Amy's one source of happiness. He was her world. And even if she was depressed, that alone doesn't make you kill someone who means so much to you. There seems to be a huge lack of motive. Even if she did lose custody, she would still see him and she could fight the fact that she had lost custody. The fact she was seen walking and acting normally on the CCTV footage makes drugs seem an unlikely factor as well. The blood found in the car was determined to most likely have come from a nosebleed of which Timothy suffered from frequently. He had gotten a particularly bad one in the car only weeks before his disappearance. 
but despite all the police investigations into the hotels where the pair had stayed and also the hotel room where Amy had committed suicide, no evidence of murder was ever found. The only piece of evidence that truly supports this theory is the fact that is the fact that Amy had changed her clothes after leaving the hotel where Timothy was last seen. This set of clothes was never again seen. So it's flawed, but it's a strong theory. And another theory is in the suicide note, and overlooked or forgotten by many, was when Amy stated that she did not want to risk Jim hurting Timothy because of her choices. Why would she suggest this? Could she be hinting that Jim was being abusive towards Timothy? Or that she had cheated and Timothy wasn't actually Jim's and so Jim would be angry and he could hurt Timothy? This theory could also explain her saying that Timothy was with people who loved him. She gave him to his biological father. When Amy and Jim first met, Jim was suffering from Hodgkin's lymphoma. He was luckily able to fight the disease, but not before undergoing chemotherapy, which has one particularly nasty side effect, infertility in men. So, when Amy later fell pregnant, they viewed it as a miracle. But perhaps it was no miracle, but the result of Amy sleeping with someone else. It's a reach, but it could have some merit. And a third theory, although it's vague, it's popular among Timothy's remaining family. They think Timothy was given to a kind family who live in a remote area and homeschooled Timothy to keep him hidden. 2011 was a high point for underground adoptions, so an illegal adoption couldn't 100% be disregarded. Some people believe Timothy was given to a remote Amish community and that he was there living and working. Another darker theory is that Timothy was given to a cult located in the Wisconsin area near the hotel where Amy and Timothy had stayed. Not much information on this so-called cult is available, but a lot of locals insist that it does in fact exist. However, none of these theories have ever been either proven or disproven. So that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you have a great day and I will get another one done really soon. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.